morning, I'm going to do the field test slash art snacks challenge portion of my art snacks versus Sketchbox for January 2016 comparison review. I know that's quite a mouthful. Um, I already prepared this line art last night um, and everything you see right here was completed without um, using the art sketch, sketch, art snacks, art snacks box. Uh, so I use Crescent No Show Render Paper, which is like a marker multimedia paper. I'm currently in the process of reviewing it with markers in general. I used a Faber-Castell mechanical pencil for the sketch. I used a Sailor Mitzel Ida, which is alcohol, ink, and waterproof uh, for the line art. I used a Tombow Mono Eraser to erase. Um, I'm thinking about using a Winsor & Newton brush marker for her skin, so it's not just like red, white, and blue. <laughs> um, now, yesterday, I had done some testing around on the adorable craft paper, stone, craft Stonehenge paper pad they sent me, and I found that the Zig Posterman marker they sent is uh, very blendable when you first apply it, but I put this down recently, or I'm sorry, I put this down, this mark here, 24 hours ago, I let it dry. As you can see, when fully dry, it goes nowhere, and uh, neither does the alcohol marker. Now, this paper is actually pretty impressive given how much water it can take. I mean, I really laid on the water last night and all it did was curve some. I could very easily fix that. So I am really impressed with Stonehenge and I have a slightly larger Stonehenge pad of white. So I think I'm gonna try playing around with them a little bit more with watercolors to see how I feel about that. Um, other things that were sent in my sketch box, you guys can watch the unboxing video and see, but if, you, if you're not in the mood for that, conversation hearts. Pro marker, hence why I grabbed the brush marker, Zig Poster Man, and a Sakura Jelly Roll. Now I've been using, let's see if I have one, hmm, it doesn't seem like I do have one out. I've been using Uni Signo pens for corrections for a really long time, but I know other artists use jelly rolls. So I am excited to give Jelly Roll a roll to give it a shot because I haven't tested it before. So last night I did this line art of like a cute sort of candy confection girl with some uh, chocolates and sprinkles because Valentine's Day is coming up. It's February 3rd. Oh, happy birthday, Dad. Um, February 3rd, so in 11 days, Valentine's. Kind of felt like doing something Valentine-y. They sent me a red. I was like, all right, sure. Uh, blue, not as Valentine-y. But, um, oh, and look how how thick that tip is. That's going to be fun to do these uh, sprinkles with. Anyway, I think I've blathered on quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to start, I think, with her skin. Now, if I had been given a larger piece of the um, Stonehenge to work with, I would have just done this on the Stonehenge because I love doing like tone tan sketches. And um, it would have worked for her skin color perfectly. And the white accents would have really stood out. But that pad is like an inch by two inches and even though I love working small I didn't necessarily want to work that small with the materials I've been given I guess I'm just not that up to the challenge so I can't really comment on how the brush marker handles because it's not really part of the art snacks if you are interested in seeing my opinion on these and pro markers, you should check out my blog because I recently did an alcohol marker review of Windsor & Newton's alcohol marker offerings. These are not new markers. Um, 
when Zer Newton purchased them, purchased the rights to them, actually Coal Arts purchased uh, Lecheset, which made pro art markers for a long time. Um, and now Windsor Newton is distributing them under their brand. So they are not new markers and not a whole lot has honestly changed. I'm gonna double cheat and grab colorless blender. I got a little heavy handed there. And uh, this is actually my first time using them in good working conditions. Uh, I tested them while I was visiting my family in Luling. And my work area on that trip was my dad's old green rocking chair, recliner chair. And I mean, it was just really hard to work in that chair. Because I like working with my legs curled up under me and it was always pitching forward and we tried to Buy me a, well, I thought we had a I had a laptop desk in storage but it turned out it was like scavenge for parts or something I don't really know so next time I visit we're probably gonna get a laptop chair I mean a laptop desk for that chair so I can work a little bit better it was a good visit it's just I always think I'll be able to get work done and I always try to fight it and I never do but I feel anxious if I don't get work done. I think I might color the chocolates as well. And I'm just using a regular, like a Blick actually, colorless blender to push the colors back over. Now I know I have my, there they are. Actually, I have a color that is intended to be a chocolate color. Yeah. I know I'm cheating so much because I'm using all these additional materials. If you enjoy watching these kind of challenge videos, I already um, recorded and posted my materials challenge video for my Sketchbox. So you should check out my feed channel, feed channel for that. If you're into that kind of thing, this is pretty much the last video I need to record for the February boxes. March is gonna be super hectic though because I ordered Art Snacks' lettering premium box. I've never done their premium boxes before. I always felt like it was kind of um, a lot of money, and it is kind of a lot of money to spend on something, on supplies. I don't know what I'm receiving, and I could probably go pick out better versions myself. But it's a lettering box, so I thought that would be neat, because I've been trying to get more into um, hand lettering, calligraphy, that kind of thing. And I also purchased, I want to say I purchased Sketchbox's like premium collection release for March. So I have two regular boxes coming in and then two specialty boxes coming in. But I thought you guys would think that was interesting. Except I also have two cons in March. I have Comic Con, which is very early in March. And then I have MTAC, which is mid-March, like Easter weekend. And MTAC is my favorite. I love MTAC. MTAC and MeccaCon are like the best cons. MTAC is in my, where I currently live, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, it's gonna be my third year doing it. Last year was a blast. MeccaCon is where I grew up, New Orleans, Louisiana. It's like, my, sorry, cats, playing in markers. Um, MeccaCon is in New Orleans, where I'm from. Um, and this is like my seventh year doing MeccaCon and not only do I just enjoy doing those cons but I make a lot of money for me at those shows so I really love
MechaCon and MTAC. And then my birthday is March 19th and I turn a ludicrous age. If you guys can guess it, send somebody some stickers or some mini prints. One guess each. I'm serious, if you can guess how old I'm turning this year, send you something. Now I'm using, finally using, one of the materials sent to me in this month's Art Snacks. I'm using the Berry Red Pro Marker. It's got a bullet nib, which is my least favorite kind of nib. Very difficult to color large areas well. Um, on a personal self-involved note, I wish they had sent a brush marker because those handle a lot better. They're a lot more fun to use. But at least the Pro Marker is in a color I don't own, very red. Um, and it's a very, like, Valentine y seasonal kind of color, a very saturated red. So that's cool. I gotta say though, um, this is a total aside, um, I really like how the brush markers are handling on the Crescent render paper. Um, I had tried them on Strathmore 300 series mixed media paper, which is what I just always use for my marker test, it's like a generic baseline. And I didn't like how they handled on there. I thought they bled a lot. And they bleed a little bit on here. But they handle a lot better on here than they do on um, the mixed media paper. So if you own brush markers and pro mar or pro markers, or both, um, and you don't really like how they handle on your marker papers, maybe you ought to give Crescent Render Paper a try. Now this is a double-sided marker, there is a chisel nib, and I'm actually not fond of the chisel nib on these. I think I've only met one chisel nib I ever liked, and that was the one on the Prismacolor markers that have a bullet nib and a chisel nib, and that's like the best chisel nib in the world, probably. Now, I can't afford it this year because I'm doing two, I'm paying, I paid for one subscription already and the other subscription was gifted, but there's a kind of a new, oh, there's several art subscription box services, um, and I have a lot of them listed on my sidebar in case you ever want to see me review any of those, but Scrawlbox came out in the UK recently and I'm really interested in that because it seems more like the sort of illustration media I do. Like with Art Snacks, I will get, or I have gotten in the past, a lot of um, like painter things, like uh, paint shapers, for example, or like clay shapers, and I just don't do anything that uses that, so, you know, it gets donated or given away or tossed. Get! Yeah. Sorry. So with pro markers, it's very difficult to get um, because you have to apply the ink so slowly. It has time to dry, which means it's very prone to streaking. Now um, the brush markers are very quick to apply 
and they are not prone to streaking because you can get you can get the ink down quick enough. So, um, in general, I prefer brush over bullet nib. I wish Winsor Newton would expand the line of brush markers because it currently has far fewer colors than the Pro Marker line does. Um, and I know they've got the marker bodies, the inks, and the you know, like the only thing stopping them is just putting them together. Killed my wrist. Killed my wrist. Uneven application. Cap won't post. All the things I hate. Now by the second application, second time I'm going over this, it's a lot smoother, but that's because I've pre-saturated the paper already. And still no bleed through on that render paper, so that's, that's awesome. A plus. However, I'm not sure what that is, but it has started to stick to my hand and uh, bleed on the marker. So that could be a defect in the marker I was sent. And notice with these boxes, I'm not going to say given. I paid for these boxes. I'm going to say sent because I purchased the materials inside. This YouTube channel, in general, is not sponsored by Sketchbox or by Art Snacks. Uh, I review these products because my readers from my blog, Natto Soup, uh, at blogspot.com, they've requested this sort of content. And uh, I've mentioned, I mentioned this in the January video, eventually this is going to go behind a paywall. It's just a $15 paywall, so if readers as a whole, contribute 15 bucks a month, everybody can see the Art Snacks and Sketchbox reviews. Which, considering what these cost, I don't think that's unfair, but I had a commenter call me obnoxious for asking for money, so, you know, I just wanted to, that always blows my mind, I'm sorry, like, y'all know this costs money, right? Like. I'm paying the electricity in the apartment that I'm working in, I'm buying these supplies, I'm taking my time, which has a value, to do these videos. Y'all know this has a video, a uh, value. Any artist, any crafter you watch who isn't getting paid for their time, um, isn't getting sent the materials to review, it has a cost to them. So, you know, if you can't afford to pay, that's one thing. Like, I've been in those shoes too. Just watch their ads because they do see money from that. Um, but, like, you know, we don't, this isn't like a free service. This isn't community service. I don't have to do this. They don't have to do this. So, if we choose to ask for money to help offset some of these costs, that's our prerogative. Like, that's totally kosher. If you have a problem with us asking for money, that's on you. And maybe you should keep that opinion to yourself. Or at least do your research before you, you start commenting stuff like that. Okay, so I'm trying to get rid of the mark. I think it was just like a, yeah, a buildup of ink on the outside of the barrel. Probably due to a pressure difference when shipping. Another thing that people seem to think is they seem to think that artists 
at art, the Artist Alley of conventions, be it an anime con or an indie comic con or even like a superhero mainstream kind of comic con, they seem to think we were paid to be there. Like someone else bought the table and told us to go and is paying us a wage. And that's true for some artists. Some bigger name comic artists do get paid by the companies they work for to make appearances like that. Um, however, the majority of us are not only paid, not paid to be there, but we paid for the table. We're not considered the con's guests. So, you know, just be nicer to the artists in the artist alley. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, 10 billion years ago, um, my mom was really fond of quoting Bambi. If you can't say something nice, don't say something, don't say anything at all. And for me, you don't have to say something nice, but if you can't say something constructive, if it isn't geared at helping the person you're saying it to, maybe you don't need to say it. When I see how some people, like L peers, for example, are talked to by the people who are in their audience, like people who consider themselves fans, it really makes me sad because it's like these are people who you like and respect and you're talking to them like they're garbage. You're talking to them like they're idiots. Why would you why would you treat somebody whose work you say you enjoy why would you treat them that way does it make you feel better do you secretly feel threatened when you see people do stuff like that because the way you you know everybody I think most people go through that where they feel threatened they see something cool that someone else is doing and they think I could do that but then they don't, and then they start to feel really bad about themselves. But the thing is, when you treat other people poorly, it doesn't make you actually feel better in the long term. What's actually going to make you feel better is trying to do that thing, trying to learn how to do that thing that you that initially made you feel threatened and like you were less. If you think you can table in the artist alley, then by all means, put in for a table the next year. If you think you draw better than someone else, instead of saying anything about it, just start posting your own videos. Start launching your own content. You don't need to be ugly to somebody to feel good about yourself. I mean, I'll tell you, it's not easy being a professional artist, especially if like 90% of your income comes from freelancing. So a lot of the artists on YouTube, they're making their money by drawing for you guys. Like that's how they're trying to pay their rent. It doesn't mean they are paying their rent that way and it doesn't mean they're making a whole lot of money. The ads, that's not a lot of money guys. And when you skip, like instead of watching 30 seconds, when you skip that, that's you're not helping that artist make a living. You're kind of taking away from that living. And I mean, yeah, I have my own horse in the race. I, I would like to make additional income from YouTube. I would like to make an income off the blog that I've been writing for a long time. So yeah, I have, I have my own reasons for talking like this, but as a creator, it makes me sad to see fellow creators who are taking their time to teach you skills or to entertain you with video games or to teach you knowledge about video games or to teach you crafting stuff. Like, it makes me sad when you say rude things to them in their comments section. And I think it's stuff you wouldn't say in real life.
So I am kind of watering down the Zig Coasterman ink in the sprinkles because I kind of want to be able to go over them again and make them darker. Now, one way I could do this is I could create a palette and put the ink down on that and pick the ink up from there. But that's effort. Also, I didn't have one in handy reach. So I'm putting it down on some of them, like a full layer on some of them, and using that as a palette to put it elsewhere. And they are, some of them are uh, very saturated in color, and some of them are very saturated in glitter, but not so much in color. I know a lot of my viewers view younger, and that's kind of why I'm lecturing you guys. Um, I know some of you guys are precious cinnamon rolls who would never ever do that to somebody. I'm not talking to y'all. I'm just talking to the ones who maybe don't understand why it's not okay to talk to someone like that. Or maybe they feel like, well, it's just the internet, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm gonna have to let that dry for a minute because otherwise additional layers of the poster man is gonna tear up the paper but you can already see the glitter give me a chance to go back to coloring chocolates. Now on this paper, um, Crescent Render paper, the ink from the brush markers does tend to sit a little longer. It just takes a minute to absorb but that really helps prevent streaking like I got in that dress. The dress is so streaky, it's embarrassing. I mean, I can even be like lazy the way I'm being with the chocolates. And that's because I know I'm gonna be going over them again. Um, you can even be kind of lazy and it still blends out. But with the bullet nibs, it doesn't blend out so I mean, I've still got patches where it, it didn't really sink in. Also, it is very difficult to control the poster man uh, in small areas, given the nib size. I mean, come on, it's like a fat bullet nib. I would be better off with a chisel because I could like turn that on its side but I am trying to be light-handed. And I'm using the undiluted ink as a shadow on the sprinkles and the jewels on her dress and on her neck. So the Poster Man ink is going to take a little bit to dry because it's kind of thick on there. And I'm kind of debating uh, trying something with the dress to make it less, uh, less smeary, less streaky. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, but I need to let all of this dry for a minute before I can do that. So I'm going to let it dry and I'll check right back. All right, so my Poster Man ink is dry, and I'm going to go over the dress with another layer of red. Now, that might kill all the shading I did, 
but hopefully it'll get rid of the streaking that I've had such a problem with. At the very least, it'll make it a little less noticeable, but it doesn't seem to be getting rid of the streaking. Let's see, this is why, if you ask my opinion, as a young artist just getting in to alcohol markers, I'm going to tell you to skip the bullet nibs. Go for something a little nicer, because bullet nibs are the devil in my opinion. They're streaky. They don't put enough, down enough ink to be able to blend. They take way longer. Your results are not gonna look as nice. dancing around that poster man right there shouldn't be too much of an issue because it is water-based and waterproof when dry and in general that means copic doesn't react or alcohol doesn't reactivate it but you know better safe than sorry Oh, these bullet nibs are murder on my hands. And I could be doing tiny, neat little concentric circles. That's like the trick. But you know, I really don't want this art snacks challenge video to take up the rest of my life. pretty much lost all the shadows I put in, which I knew was going to happen. However, I mean, this marker has pretty decent range. You can get about four tones of red out of it. So that's your dress. Still kind of streaky. You might not be able to see it. Sort of losing definition. Trying to add it back. I mean, really, you get some pretty good depth with just one marker. Now I'm adding some detail to the chocolate. For some reason, this brush marker is skipping, which doesn't make me happy. Makes it a lot harder to use, actually. Well, those chocolates look pretty good, making me hungry. So now I think it's finally time for the jelly roll. Get it started. Oh, wow. And right now I'm using it over the Zig Posterman to add uh, a few highlights to the gems on her dress. And it goes over that, okay. Add some highlights on the chain on her neck. Add some highlights to her hair, which I'll refine in a couple minutes after it's dry. super concerned right now with um, them being like perfect 
do, however, have a big, a big hurdle to overcome. I kind of wanted to add white fishnets to her legs, but I think because it's, I'm having trouble kind of getting the, the jelly roll to put out enough ink, which is the same problem I had with, with have with Signo pins, is they just, they're gel pins, and they're rollerball gel pins, and you know, like, all of the problems that come from using a rollerball, especially over other media, is going to be present in a gel pin. It also puts down a very fine line. You had to go over it a couple times and something that I had noticed on my test is that um, and I can show you guys in a minute is that the red in the, the pro marker actually starts to tint the jelly like the jelly roll absorbs some of the red so it turns kind of pink hands shaking so I over applied my black try to be more careful over here see if I can go back in there maybe not maybe so alright okay so you can go back once you've applied color if you've over applied gives kind of an anemic line though when you go over it again instead of putting down more ink it kind of just like rolls over the ink and makes it thinner much as everybody else seems to love the jelly roll, I'm not really convinced. You can see on her dress where it started to pick up that red. Trying to add white highlights to the sprinkles. It will, however, roll over a variety of surfaces, which is something Signo was just not really careful capable of doing. It seems like it'll roll. Adding some highlights to my chocolates.
think I think that's it. I think that's our art snacks challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope the series in general is helpful in helping you decide whether or not you want to subscribe to one service, the other service, or neither service. Um, for a full comprehensive review, please check natosoup.blogspot.com. That should be coming up sometime this week. I'll do my best. Um, I'm Becca Hilburn. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, leave a comment, consider subscribing to my channel. If you love these reviews, please consider writing to Art Snacks, Sketchbox, or both, and letting them know what you think, because your opinions matter. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye!